starter time. <laughs> well, I should have made a video of before and after. I thought about it after it unbolted the wires, but the only fatality was I lost the nut for this after I tried to put it on the cheap Chinese starter that I just installed on my Suburban. I got a nice shiny starter and I tried to put the GM nut on and then I dropped the GM nut somewhere in here. But what I've been doing was changing the starter. So I'm gonna put the camera right there, aimed right up at the starter, and I'm gonna crank it up like I should have done. You know it's making nasty noises, but let's see how it sounds now. After I get done with this stupid seatbelt beep, crank that baby up! <laughs> couldn't take it anymore. Where I'm going, it's snowing. And I did not want to be changing the starter on a rest stop in the snow. Boy, something sounds like it's a little grindy. I checked my AC toy. It's nice and smooth. You know, it sounds like I got an exhaust leak on this thing. So I pound it on the pipe here, and it rattles. What is rattling? Not the heat shield on the transmission. Could it be the pipe inside a pipe that's rattling? It's the only time I hear it. I don't know. The starter sounds good. The steering box sounds nasty. I had a fellow over here with a Mercedes diesel a minute ago, and he was jiggling the steering. You can hear the steering box go clunk, 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 260,000 miles, close to 500,000 kilometers. This bushing in the bottom here is worn, and it's not a big job, but it's a big job. Pull the steering box, take off the pitman arm, and the center link connection over there. Maybe I'll just go to the junkyard tomorrow to pull apart and get a good low mileage one that you can't tell the mileage anymore. Steering box. Let's see if I can jiggle this for you. We'll get to turn off the motor. Hang on a second. I'm doing it the old fashioned way, lying on the ground. And then I'm gonna take off the EGR valve in a minute. 260,000, just turned 260. 260,000, 38 miles. Put on 3,500 miles since I bought it. Listen to this steering box and this starter. The drive is good, even though you can barely get your fingers in there to turn it. There's a one-way clutch or a sprag, similar to how transmission works, but it's not loose. So if the solenoid's weak or whatever, I'll bring it to the rebuilder. And for 50 bucks, he'll refresh it without sandblasting or painting it. So I'm gonna jiggle my steering shaft. Listen to this. to get a good grip on that, getting grease on my arm. See if I can get it from on top. Well, I think there's play in here, which is typical of GM in any steering box. Doesn't get any oil circulation down here. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Wanna come over here and jiggle wiggle my steering? Sure. If you don't mind, I can't grip it and hold the camera steady and focus my eyes. I'm too old and fat. Oh yeah. Ah. Let me fire up this thing. Crank that baby up. V8 302 5 liter. Oh yeah, your battery's almost dead. Right, dude. It's been on for three hours. <laughs> Just wiggle, jiggle the steering. I don't know, a couple inches back and forth. We'll see if we got any slop here. More. Oh yeah, there it is. Yep. Oh, you can, you can see it clear as day. A little bit more. Yeah, come on over here. Come on over here. I want you to see this. You ever used one of these devices before? I have once in my life. Really, you have? Yeah, but iPhone once. junk. <laughs> <laughs> Crawl underneath here. Oh! Get your paws dirty. And. 
right there. See where I got the camera? Yeah. You just, I'm gonna turn this Ford off. I want you to hear it. I want people to hear it. You don't want to hear a, a quality engine? Runs well. What'd you pay for that thing? $5,000? 400 bucks. No, you can't pull the key halfway out. You gotta remove it completely. Yeah, it's designed. You can feel that for Too bad it's junk. Yeah, exactly. Right, it's like a, what'd you say, a trash can? Oh, yeah. You can hold the camera rock steady. Yeah, I can see it. Side to side, take it up the slack. Yep. Can you see it? Yep. And I bet you, hang on a sec, I'm going to crank this baby up. Oh, Lord. Your fingers in the fan, hang on. Got, it, you got your finger in the fan? Yeah, I can feel it. Here we go, crank her up. Oh yeah. Actually, it sounds less clunky. Can you see that shaft, the Pikmin shaft going side to side? Yeah. Or the sector shaft, whatever it is? Yep. It's moving about. Crazy, huh? There's your wear in your steering box. Clunky, clunky. And I watched a guy on YouTube rebuild a steering box, but it's the last part out, first part in syndrome. So maybe I can find a low mileage one, and maybe one day I'll rebuild a steering box. Never done it in my life. Sue. What's about over here? What? You got wear on the tire, so why? Because oh, the not. camber adjustment right there, just to the right of the grease, uh -huh. has to be moved. But oh. you need to do it when you do an alignment, because if you change the, the upper control arm position, uh -huh. you have to adjust the tie rods, oh. because you move the wheel this way, you move it this way to get rid of that wear, then you have to adjust the tie rod in or out to adjust your toe. Yeah. So I'm going to jack this thing up and check my front end parts in a minute. I'm going to put you on pause. You can watch it all in one fancy video. So 10 minutes later, 15 minutes later, I finally got the vehicle moved over to the concrete. I'm going to crawl underneath and see if I can figure out why the exhaust is so rattle bang clangy. And there is Whoa, there is a mount there, a rubber mount. And I wonder what the heck is clanging here. Can you see that rubber mount? Hmm. I don't know what is clanging. If you ask me, it's the pipe inside the pipe. GM has been using dual wall pipes since the early 70s. The new starter's installed. But I am going to have the GM one rebuilt. I'm going to take this one off. I don't trust these Chinese ones. They're junk and everything. You buy it on eBay. Guaranteed it comes from China. It's second quality, third quality, fourth quality. Original one went 260000 Yep, I think the pipe, none of these welds are broken. I think the pipe inside the pipe, or maybe, hang on. I also need my skid plate that goes here. That's missing. Maybe I'll find that at the junkyard tomorrow. And I'm gonna jack this thing up off the ramps. And see what's loose in my steering aside from my rattle clang bang knock knock steering box. Yep, pipe within a pipe. What else could it be? Nothing else is touching. That's some good Arizona red mud. Look how they pinch that pipe to go over the axle. Or the cross member, rather. Hmm. You don't hear it in the vehicle, but just curious. And my pump rubbed through. It's not rubbed through yet, but I'm going to take it off and prevent it from happening. I gotta put my glasses on to see anything. Can't see anything. Looks like rust. I think it's mud. Just mud. Got a light coating of surface rust. Four wheel drive. Three rivers. Is that in Mexico? A lot of the parts on this truck are made in Mexico. Oh look at this. My oxygen sensor wire is rubbing my 
four-wheel drive shaft and it is rubbed. Oh, look at that. It's rubbed right through. wonder if that's shorting. Huh. I had that happen on the X's Honda Accord a million years ago. I jacked it up to see which tires were out of balance and uh, shorted the computer. It took me three or four months till I finally figured it out. I jacked it up again and I crawled underneath. I thought the problem was on top, a wet computer or something. It turns out that the when I jacked it up the axle dropped and hit the oxygen sensor wire and shorted the computer. What a simple thing. So I think this has rubbed through and that might be my shorting, my check engine light. That is definitely rubbed through. Huh, I wonder where the factory clippy is. Ah, this is supposed to be attached to something somewhere. It is not supposed to be hanging in the breeze. It's got a little clippy spot here. supposed to be attached to something. I suppose a zip tie will fix everything, huh? Look at that. Maybe I'll just zip tie it to this wiring harness. Right here. Right there. Oh, I think there'd be a little tab here. It looks like it slides into something. I noticed that, but I forgot all about it. When I bought it, I crawled underneath. Well, let's see what it's supposed to be attached to. But well, I'm going to attach it now. And unfortunately, this transmission is coming out. And how do you get the torsion bars off? They are under great, great tension. Where's my fuel filter? That has not been changed in a dog's age. Look at that. It is an old fuel filter. So that's coming off. Get some fuel filter. Take care of my transfer case. Rebuild the transmission by Mr. Spike Punk. So, oh, look at this. Two areas are rubbed through, or did I just move that? So I gotta zip tie that there. Simple enough, or I could just unclip it. Never been off. Wrap it around, just zip tie that. And I'm not gonna find out what's clanging here, because it must be the anything else. It's not rubbing. Nope. Not touching there. It's close, but it's not. It's definitely up here. What a racket. And my front suspension needs to be aligned. And Brake bleeder covers. Got nice grease inside my boots. My ball joint boots. My bumper is rotted right off. Just look around. You look around and sometimes you find things that are loose, falling off, rubbing. This never know. That's why you do a visual inspection. A visual inspection. Got the k and oil filter. Got any grease fittings on this huge joint? Oh, look at that. Missing an exhaust bolt. Huh. How do you like them apples? I don't see any signs of exhaust leak. You see a little bit of black smoke. See? You never know what you're going to find. You do a visual inspection. Hey, this battery's going to go dead soon. With the light on. This battery, even though it had 96%, it'll be down at 50 and then it'll turn off junk. At least it saves the video. Ugh. Anything else missing here except for an exhaust manifold bolt? I try to remove those on the Toronado, that 66 I just bought. The guy answered me and he said, what do you expect? <laughs> yeah, typical. He acted just like a dealer. Not very nice. Not very nice. So I don't think I'm going to have a bolt for this. I'm supposed to use a stud and a nut. Not enough. Interesting that that's missing it. It's not leaking at all. Sounds like I have an exhaust leak. Maybe the muffler's just 
falling apart internally like my exhaust pipe. I gotta take my fenders off. It's all packed full of leaves. I was looking from the door hinge. No rust. Oh, there's a little bit of rust. doesn't have a tab for the emergency brake on this side. Sometimes they do it for right-hand drive. Bang, bang, bang. All right, so I've got to jack it up off the jack stand, so. I'll crawl out from under here. I put this rubber thing back in place. That was hanging down. All right, I'm gonna jack it up off the ramps and see if I can see how my steering is. Alrighty, here we go. A couple people thought they might have known this friend of a friend's son who died, but no, his name was Matthew and he lived in the Chicago area. I don't know where in Chicago. I've got a friend that lives there. I'm gonna go visit him next summer. July 23rd weekend. Or actually the Corvair show was not on the weekend. Oh, that's strange. Hmm. Well, this kid lived in Chicago, never met him. I just met these people. They were friends of Miss Hip Chick. They're having dinner at their house. And bad news. Whoa, baby. I think I'm at the limit. Uh-oh. Sometimes you can lift up the vehicle and pivot it on the jack. Which, <laughs> yikes. No, his name was Matt. Chicago area. So I'm going to be in Chicago last weekend of July. Visit Rich the Pontiac guy. Go for a drive in his Pontiac. He's got a 65 Grand Prix like mine, but was built to do one thing go fast in a straight line. It's got eight luggers, I think, I hope. 389 tri power, or is it a 421 Rich? With a four speed and no power steering or brakes. 389 or a 421. It was the last year for the 389. Tri Power 65. The next year it was only available on the 421. And it's got a four speed and no power steering or brakes. Turquoise featured in smoke signals. No vinyl top, just built for speed. They didn't want no lousy Catalina or 2 plus 2 or GTO. They got a Grand Prix with that nice rear end treatment with the lights that should have gone all the way across. So I'll see his Pontiac collection, but that's next July. Hope I make it. I'm going to see if I can get that ramp out of there and check my front end. Actually, I can do this for now. Let's put the camera on the ramp. I can jiggle the one wheel. Let's see. How does that look? Whoops! Don't you know it? I'm not sure if you got a perfect view, but. Oh, I see a bad, I see a bad Pitman arm, or the idler arm rather, the idler arm. Pitman arm's on the steering box. Yo, Ford guy, go ass over here. Ford guy, get your ass over here. Come on, give me a hand for a sec. What's he working on? What are you working on over there? Let's just jump these things. God. Exploders and Montaners and let's just jump these things. What you working on? The Mountaineer. This is one of America's best SUVs ever made. History of right, mankind. Right, liar, fake news. All wheel drive, V8. The only thing good in this thing is this little ratcheting Actually, I could use that right wrench now. that I found. Is that a 7 16th? 10 millimeter Duralast. Yes! Nothing but the best. It's just gizmo here. That's for telling readouts for all the PIDs on your car. Transmission temp, coolant really? temp. Yeah. What gear you're in. I'll do a bunch of stuff. A little, a little bit, bit worn, of, huh? Needs a little bit of detailing. <laughs> it's a little, a little slimy. A little bit. Mercury Mountaineer. Yeah. Wait, wait. He's dead. He got a better horn than me. I get a horn from the junkyard. It doesn't even work. Oh, man. It was so easy to remove them, too. I'll have to get some more tomorrow. This is what I got to get tomorrow. Fix this vacuum line because it defaults to defrost on everything. Oh, the plastic. Yeah, they disintegrate. I don't know where it went. Mm -hmm. There's part of it. Cruise control. 
Yeah, they fall apart. Just yep. like on my heater control, my heater core, I've got that plastic T connector for the rear heat. Mm -hmm. oh, this thing's been sitting outside. Only for four years. Only for four years. It was a one owner though, wasn't it? Yeah, brand new one owner. $400. Not bad for 400 bucks. Just got to work on them. Come and help me with this for oh, a second. Yeah, that's right. yeah back to the GM. The, 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 the real vehicle. <laughs> yeah, here you go. Yeah. Ford, Ford, Ford. <laughs> of course, the BMW is in the garage where it belongs. Out of sight. I'm melting. Um, can you wiggle, jiggle the, steer, the the right wheel? Or actually, here, how's your back? Can you lift this up so I can get the ramp out of here? <laughs> or I'll do it. Ready? Yeah. Yes. How's your back now? <laughs> Just when you thought your back wasn't bothering you, sure is now. So if you could, I think my lamp is right there. Oh, aren't we having a good time with the barking dog next door? You tell it to shut up, it just barks more. Stupid barking dog. It's not the dog's problem, it's the people's problem. So I'm going to turn the light on. And if you could do the 3 o'clock, 9 o'clock jiggle wiggle. Oh, oops. High rod's good there. And... Nope, nope, uh, 3 and 9. Seems like... That seems kosher. Just a minute, I'm going to get my cardboard because I think that my idler arm, which is a huge monster, I thought moving up and down. And that's not supported by anything but a jack. Ah, what could go wrong? You want to stand? Ah. You have a lot of faith. Wait for it to focus. A little bit more. I gotta work on that with a crowbar, which you have underneath your Ford, don't you? I saw that you have a big three foot crowbar. Yeah, that's it. I thought I saw an inner tie rod. I need a zip tie also. And I got a little bit of grease. Need some spare grease? I got that in, uh, where do we get that? Carter's? Marietta, Georgia. Where would you like to guess this is made? <laughs> and it's Actually, not what you think. Made in the USA? India. India. Yeah, they make a lot of iron parts in India drains, but I have a made in USA one from Walmart. I'm going to. Hmm. Give me a second. I'm going to put a jack stand under this. Under this. All right. Where were we? Hmm. Don't pry on that. That's your plastic four wheel drive actuator. I'm not going to be prying very hard. Nope. Bang! You want a smaller driver? Well, just jiggle the three and nine o'clock again. That doesn't look like it's moving at all whatsoever. Actually, I can get this in the front. Uh huh. No, stop moving for a second. Let me just see if I can. No, idler arm is fine. Okay, let's go over to the other side. To the far side. Actually, that's not a bad thing right there because we got a jack stand on that side. Safety jack. All right, you want to jiggle, wiggle at three and nine. No, no, on this side? Oh, it doesn't really matter. That seems fine. That seems nice and tight. Whoops. A little less. Yeah, a little bit of play there. Where's that? In the pitman where it attaches through the center link. Oh. Yeah. Do it again. Very small, very, very small amount. Keep going, keep doing it. Less. Less. Very, very small amount. So if I do change the steering box, I might put a pitman arm on. Just uh let's get it from a different angle. Do it again, a little bit. Minuscule. 
almost insignificant. Let me see if I can put the bar on it. Minuscule amount. But you're supposed to test it in two directions. So let's see what I can come up with here. If I can get a bar in here. So the next test we're going to do is we're going to put some 2x4 in a lever and see if I can test my ball joints. Don't go away. All right, where were we? So, my Ford friend. Hello, <laughs> If you can, well, I can do it, actually. I wish I had a 2x4, an 8-footer. What I have here is a pivot point, and we're putting some pressure on the ball joints by prying, and those look nice. Actually, can you do this so I can hold the camera steady because it's wiggling? If you're not sure if it's loose, just put your fingers on the knuckle and on the control arm. And I don't think we have any play there whatsoever. You could also do the three o'clock, uh, the six o'clock, nine o'clock grab. That's another way of doing it. Nothing. No, top one. Nothing. Nice and tight. Wheel bearings are tight. Unlike that two-wheel drive one on the way back. In Gainesville, on the way to Gainesville, Florida from Miami, with the bearing let loose. Real the, those little thingamajigs inside. The rollers all went nuts. And luckily, I was able to buy one because I forgot to bring my Timkin. I bought one at the auto parts store, installed it in the parking lot, and uh, gave it back because I found one in the junkyard for $7. A nice smooth one. And off that truck went. All right, where are we now? I don't see any movement there whatsoever. Mm. Don't feel it. Nothing. You want to do the six o'clock, nine o'clock? Nothing. Tight. Tight, tight. Yeah, how do you like that? That's been greased in a dog's age. And yet nothing more. Nice smooth roads in California. Just that steering box. Alrighty. So we can put this down now. This is a great. This is a great, big, low-profile, two-ton jack, mm. <laughs> and the bolt's missing. But the problem with this Trip jack out. is the handle is too short. Yep. The handle's too short to get underneath big vehicles. It's got six inches <laughs> missing from the... <laughs> You're trying to stretch it, I know. Alrighty, we've had enough fun here with our 27-minute video. It's funny how the long videos get hits and the videos I don't title get hits. That's it, we're checking out, the sun's gone down. In South Carolina, one more day and then I'm heading north because I gotta go shovel some snow and check for frozen pipes. So that's it. We're having a good time, aren't we?